Hey, Michael with X-Force PC. In my last video, one of my last videos, um, I talked about whether or not you should get the RTX, uh, new NVIDIA RTX cards with or for X-Plane 11. And um, in there I mentioned that AMD had not been competitive for a very long time, and I stand by that statement. And that statement refers to X-Plane. I'm not referring to Call of Duty or uh, Shoot 'em Up Game 5 or whatever. I'm talking about X-Plane, and AMD has not been competitive. And so uh, one of the comments I got was, what about the RX 580? The RX 580 is you know, roughly equivalent to a, 10, a GTX 1060. Um, I happen to have an RX 580. So to prove that I'm right, we're going to test this RX 580. This is an 8 gig RX 580. Again, 8 gigs. It has an 8 pin power connector. And the reason I point that out is that's indicative of how much power it draws. 8 pin power connector, 8 gigs of VRAM, RX 580. Here we have, we're going to compare it to the GTX 1060, which I was told it was comparable to. And here we have a 6 pin connector for power. Yes, right there. And that indicates, again, about how much power it draws. It draws a little bit less than the RX 580, because your RX 580 has an 8-pin power connector. This is a 6-gig card here. Next, because I know the 1060 is going to trounce the 10, uh, excuse me, the 580 from AMD, I'm going to compare it to this little puny uh, 1050 Ti which I think is also going to beat it. The 1050 Ti has no power connector on top. It gets all the power it needs through the PCI Express slot. And uh, you can see it's a pretty small card uh, as well. And this is a four gig card. And then lastly, the one that I think it's gonna be most comparable to, but I am hope I'm actually wrong about this, but I have this little teeny tiny GTX uh, 750 Ti. And I believe this is a 2 gig card. Yeah, 2 gig. Of course, no power connector on it at all. And it's actually got this, you know, sort of small design with this little tiny fan because it's designed to go in a small form factor PC. You can change out this bracket and put it in a small form factor PC. Now, I am aware, no need to point it out, that there is something called Vega that is put out by AMD. It's their higher end cards. Well, we're not looking at that today. First of all, I don't want to go out and spend four or five hundred dollars on a Vega card just to prove myself right. I happen to have an RX 580, and that's why I'm using that. So we're going to run some tests and uh, see actually how they compare. Now, while I wait on this thing to do a BIOS update and install Windows, I will tell you that I don't lay all of the blame with AMD um, for the performance disparity on X-Plane. In fact, I probably lay most of the blame on the X-Plane folks, and it may not be totally their fault either. It may be a limitation of OpenGL. But the, um, the X-Plane folks are working on implementing Vulkan, and one thing that Vulkan hopes... I don't say promises, but we hope that it does, is level the playing field with AMD. Again, there's a big disparity right now between AMD and NVIDIA, and uh, we hope that Vulkan will level that playing field. It's not going to, you know, revolutionize things, but hopefully, you know, if an RX 580 is supposed to perform like a GTX 1060 in other games, that hopefully in X-Plane we get the same result, which we're not currently getting. Um, the, I will mention too the test I'm doing. I've got 16 gigs of DDR4 2400, kind of normal uh, speed RAM. I've got an i5 8400, kind of a mid-level i5 that I'm using, and um, of course we're using uh, went the latest build of Windows 10 and the latest drivers for the RX 580 and for the Nvidia cards. So um, more to come. Okay, so now we're ready to run our first test, and I've got the RX 580 installed. I've got the latest build of Windows 1809 installed with all the updates. I've got the latest AMD driver released two days ago, and um, it's just it's a clean OS. The only thing I've installed is X-Plane, and then I installed uh, the Heaven Benchmark. So we're going to run the Heaven Benchmark, and the reason I like this benchmark is it is heavily loaded on the video card doesn't really care that much about you know what processor you have in here 
So we're going to run it at high quality with normal tessellation and X4 on our anti-aliasing and we're going to run it at our system resolution which is 1920 by 1080. So what this will do is this will uh, run a benchmark on the graphics card. Again, it's very, very low load on the processor. And it will also let us know for sure that our RX 580 and other cards are performing sort of as expected. So we're going to hit benchmark here and it's going to start going and we're getting around at the moment 60-ish frames per second, which is good. So uh, I won't make you watch the whole thing. I'll check back in with you in a minute. Okay, so we're back here at the end of the test and um, we see we got an average score of uh, our average frame per second of 78.6 and a score of 1978. Uh, and this is again with the RX 580. Not sure how that will stack up against uh, the NVIDIA cards. It will probably match up pretty closely with the 1060 would be my guess. But now let's take a look at the RX 580 in X-Plane. Okay, so now we're in X-Plane, and the test I do in X-Plane is pretty simplistic. I simply go to LaGuardia Airport, sit on the middle of the runway, and look at the frame rate. And you might say that's a pretty basic way to do it, but I have benchmarked X-Plane so many different ways, and I can take and go to different airports and put it in different scenarios, and in the end, the difference between one graphics card and another by percentage is always, you can refer back to this simplistic test I'm about to do, and the percentage stays the same. So all those other scenarios I would run would be basically a big waste of time because I'd get the same exact results. As far, and when I say the same results, I mean this card is this much faster than that card. So um, the graphics settings I am using or what I sort of call medium high-ish. Um, you can see we got HDR on, our texture quality is maximum. We're using two gigs of our texture memory. Anti-aliasing is at 2x SSAA with FXAA. We're running at 1080p on a single display. And we've got our number of objects set to high. And so when I hit done here, uh, I simply look at the frame rate and sort of wait for it to settle out and then note it. We're jumping between 34 and 35 frames per second right now. Um, maybe a little hard to read um, on the camera because these numbers are so small. So I'm going to record this at uh, 34.5. And then you can also pause it. You get a slightly different number. Um, we're getting 36 and a half right now. I'll go ahead and record that just for giggles. So, uh, basically right around 35 frames per second in X-Plane. So now we will uninstall all this um, AMD driver stuff and hook up some NVIDIA cards. Okay, so I got our GTX 1066 gig put in. I've run the um, benchmark on the, the, the Heaven benchmark. And um, as you can probably see there, we did a little bit better than the RX 580. We got a 94.3 frames per second, and we got a score of 23.75. Um, I'll still call that roughly equivalent. We averaged, you know, it's kind of there between 80 and 95 frames per second, so 80 frames per second on the RX 580 and around you know, 95 on the um, on the GTX 1060. So I guess I'll call that roughly equivalent. Um, so the next thing we need to do is we need to fire up X-Plane and see how we do there. Now, if you recall on the RX 580, we were looking at about 35 frames per second, uh, 34.5 on the runway and 36.5 when I actually pause the sim. And this is where if you have an AMD RX 580 or something similar that you're not gonna like what you're gonna see here. Um, so we've shown that in regular gaming, because that's what the Heaven Benchmark 
does or measures, we're about 20% faster on GTX 1060. Um, within X-Plane, I'm expecting it to be more like 100% faster, or, or in other words, double the, or close to double the performance. Um, and that just shows you that there's work to be done uh, by the X-Plane folks, and that's what Vulcan hopefully will address. Now, if, you're, if you want faster frame rate right now, it's October 10th, I think, today of 2018, and you don't want to wait six more months for Vulkan to be implemented, then you might want to consider getting yourself an NVIDIA graphics card if you've got something along the lines of an RX 580. I don't know how the Vega cards perform. I'm assuming it's going to be, you know, a similar situation. Now, I've got our frame rate locked to uh, the, the refresh rate of the monitor. And the refresh rate of the monitor is 60 hertz. So we're pegging that out. So I have to turn off V-Sync to see what the true frame rate is. So we're getting 66 frames per second. I, I don't know if you can read that in the upper left corner or not, but 66 frames per second. Um, and then we'll go ahead and pause it. And we're getting 72.5. Which is at 36.5 paused versus 72.5 paused. That's almost double. So when comparing an RX 580 to a GTX 1060, in regular gaming, the 1060 is about 20% faster. In X-Plane, it's roughly double or twice as fast. So we'll go ahead and uh, take a look at the uh, 1050 Ti next. Okay, so we have the 1050 Ti here, and you know we've seen a significant decrease in performance. Um, so it's now, you know, below the RX 580, and again this measure, measures reg, regular gaming. Excuse me. So we've got a uh, 54.6 frames per second and a score of uh, 1376 in the Heaven benchmark, which is. Um, which means the RX 580 is coming out, out in between the 1050 Ti and the 1060. And there's a pretty big gap there. You know, you're going from 55 to 95 frames per second between the 1050 Ti and the 1060. So that's a pretty significant amount. Uh, let's go see what the 1050 Ti does in X-Plane. So in regular gaming, the RX 580 is about, oh, I don't know, a good 50% faster. Yeah, about 50% faster in regular gaming, going from 55 to 78 frames per second in regular gaming. But again, we're going to see what we get in X-Plane. As a reminder, in X-Plane, the RX 580 got 30, about 35 frames per second. Um, and let's see what we get here with the 1050 Ti. The 1050 Ti, or as a reminder, is a 4 gig card. It requires no auxiliary power and gets all of its power from the PCI Express slot. So it's a really good card for people that have low powered systems that don't have a fancy power supply with auxiliary power for their graphics card. Um, and it works really, really well in X-Plane. And just pretend the Jeopardy theme is playing right now. All right, we're in X plane. Can sort of let things settle out. And we're getting almost identical to what we got on the 1060 which tells me really at 1080p our bottleneck isn't the graphics card when we're using an NVIDIA card. Again, this is at 1080p. Um, it's the, the processor. So we're getting 64.5 and then paused. We're getting 71. So, um, 
as a reminder, we got 72.5 paused on the 1060 and 71 on the 1050 Ti. So really we didn't see much of a drop there. This card is still almost twice as fast as an RX 580. I guess to try to find a card that is uh, on the NVIDIA side of things that is in direct comparison to an RX 580, I'm going to now drop down to the 750 Ti. Um, it's the next lowest card I have. They do make a 1050, a 1040, a 1030, and all that. I just don't have any of those cards. So we'll try this 750 Ti next. Okay, so here we are looking at the 750 Ti. See another drop in frame rate um, to 32.5. So this is about, I don't know, a third or so of the speed of the 580 at 78.5, something like that. Um, our score dropped to 819. So now let's um, have a look at X-Plane and see how we do in that. Um, if X-Plane were like other games, I would expect our frame rate to be probably around, I don't know, 10, but I'm, when you're comparing it to the RX 580, but, um, you know, because of the whole NVIDIA issue with, excuse me, the AMD issue with X-Plane, I don't know what we're going to see. Now, this is only a 2 gig card, and I noted earlier that we're using about 2 gigs of VRAM to run this uh, scene, for lack of a better term. If we manage to consume all of the VRAM on the card, which we're going to be dangerously close to doing, that'll cause a huge performance hit. So, um, you know, this may be, I guess, a little unfair-ish to this card, only having two gigs, but um, we're going to see what happens and um, see if we get close to that RX 580 score of around 35 frames per second. I'm not sure you can even buy this card anymore, this 750 Ti. It was a really good value card, you know, a few years back. Alright, what have we got? Oh, uh, well, more bad news for the RX 580. Uh, so the 750 Ti is getting 41 and a half frames per second, which is faster than about the 35-ish we're getting from AMD. I'll pause it and we're still getting about 41 and a half. So uh, the RX 580 was getting about 35 and the 750 Ti, which is like a really old card with two gigs of RAM, is still beating it at 41 and a half frames per second. So hopefully this can sort of put to rest um, why I said AMD is not competitive, I'm referring to X-Plane because that's what we do. If you're not playing X-Plane, RX 580 is a really good card. Um, you know, it performs um, almost as good as a 1060. Um, and I think they sell for like $199 now. So um, again, it's a really good card for the price. Now, a Six months ago it wasn't because it was being inflated by uh, cryptocurrency miners, but right now, you know, it is a pretty good bargain if you're not doing X-Plane. And I'll reiterate, Vulcan, in theory, when it's implemented in many months, will hopefully address the great disparity of AMD graphics card performance within X-Plane. And I'll also reiterate, I know our, uh, there is a Vega 64 and Vega 56, and I'm not going to go out and buy one of those cards just to make another one of these videos, but I'm pretty sure the results would be similar um, to what we're seeing here. Um, so hopefully that helps you understand the statement I made earlier about AMD not being competitive.